Hi guys, Tony here from Tony Reviews. This week on the Camper Build series, we're gonna take a look at what became the bane of my life for a good few weeks, which is the, uh, the slatted sort of floating ceiling, if you wanna call it that. Before I get into it, let's roll the B-roll. So the ceiling is essentially three large slats of five and a half mil ply running across the van, cut into sections, and then one final smaller section of the same five and a half mil ply that just fills the back, back part. The problem that I had was as the uh, sections butt up against each other, um, with the arcs in the van, the curvature in the ceiling itself, it was pulling pulling the wood in different directions and so the gaps were not meeting and I originally um, my first batch of wood hadn't been cut completely straight and I put the the boards not meeting down to the fact that the cuts weren't straight I had all the boards recut uh, even bought some second boards um, and rejigged the headliners out just in case it was something to do with the way that I'd cut it and you know they weren't fitting and still had the same problem at this point, I spoke to somebody, uh, a friend of mine, who lives on a boat in Canada, and he's pretty much rebuilt his, uh, his little yacht um, by himself, by hand. And uh, obviously, we all know the, the roofs in, um, in yachts and boats are, are arced when you go under into the sort of cabin areas. And uh, so I thought, who better to speak to than somebody who's built a boat, lives on a boat? And he explained to me, it's the way that the roof, the wood is being pulled in these two directions, almost if you imagine like a globe, you know, trying to bend the wood round, they're not going to fit because you're bending it in all sort of axes. So uh, his advice was to go with it, just go with the, um, go with the curves, go with the cracks and, you know, live with it. But my intention was to have this floating slatted ceiling with the lengths of the, the pine slats running vertically the length of the van. So what you're gonna see is the trials and tribulations and all the stuff in between of all the tests and nightmares of uh, the bits that I filmed anyway of me fitting this slatted floating ceiling. This is the hole of cutting the um, insulation board where the skylight's gonna go. Not sure what I'm gonna do at the back there to cover that bloody wire yet, but I'm just cutting out the ceiling panels as well. But the thing about the front is, the panel goes from 160 centimeters wide across the van here, but it tapers in towards this area down to 140 centimeters roughly. And then it's not only tapered, but you're working on two axes because all of these joists and stuff don't. When you're cutting wood, you're not only cutting it, you're not only cutting it that way, but it tapers in that way. So you're cutting a joint that goes like this and a joint that goes like this, which is what makes it, as you can see, so difficult. So you've got to do that with every thing. You know, it's going around here, but at the same time, it's also going down there. So everything has to be cut to fit bespoke in all of these weird bloody angles. So that's where we are at the moment. Hoping to get the ceiling panels up and cut this weekend and maybe the skylight in as well if the weather holds out. So that's where we are. Done a little clean up as well, all the old bits of wood in a box. Got me sick of flex hanging up. So that's where we are. Little update. Lights are all in place where they're going to be. And the tongue and groove is not as it's going to be finished because there's going to be some boarding behind that which is going to be black. But basically all the tongues and grooves are going to be cut off. So all of these tongues and all the grooves on the other side will be cut so the boards will be flush. But I'm going for that 12 mil gap all the way down. So that's where we are. This is where the skylight's going to go just marking out where the ridge of the edge of the frame is going to go 
compared to where the lights are spaced so this light and then the rear light which is the last one as you get in the back but um that's roughly what it's going to look like a sort of floating ceiling with the black back of the ceiling behind and i'm going to stain these in a dark walnut as well and then the countertops will also be dark walnut so that's where i am also this is the inside the unit that i made so this was all just above the headliner which was open metal and i've basically leveled off a shelf and carpet lined it all so each of these pieces is individually made um as you can see the shape is like a banana shape it bends down but i've got a nice flat shelf that i've made in there and at the front of that will be a cabinet so all that will be blocked off and then you can open that out and then that will be your little covered area inside so this is the other bit that i've done so far carpeted around the sliding door and obviously you've still got these bobbly bits but it's hiding a lot of that and then the, the ceilings lining up here and again i've still got this issue of losing losing this gap somehow which i think i'm going to do that um what do i call it with the uh sick of black sick flexed down the middle type thing and then obviously you've got the slats running vertically the other way but in terms of this edge i mean it looks nice and clean this is just hand cut jigsawed to that i've got to repaint this bit because i recut that slightly right so this is one test now this is two bits of five mil ply that are cut wonky on purpose uh, I've sicker flex the middle with some white sicker flex and spread some out onto the wood as well without sort of wiping it off properly. Um, but as you can see, you, where the sicker flex is sort of shiny, it's giving it a shiny appearance. But I'm just I'm thinking, well, at least because the wood is five and a half mil, so there is flex. There will be flex in the roof. And the last thing I want is it to crack if I was just to fill it. Now this small section here, I've overfilled with some wood filler over the sicker flex to see if that pops out or comes out. And you can see that if you bend it enough, it will crack. So the I've got a couple of options is what I think. I either pull the entire roof down, don't bother putting these panels up that are gonna go across the roof, and I run two, sec two, two panels, the length of the van, and one panel across the back. So there's gonna be, there will have to be some joins. But if I was to join the length of the van, a panel and a panel, and have a gap down the middle, I could effectively lose the gap down the middle with a tongue and groove slat. It could sit behind that slat. There would obviously be a section at the back um that would have a, a gap like this which i would then have to sicker flex and you would potentially see parts of that so that's one option the other option is i was thinking i could tape the edges of my two boards so that any overspill of sicker flex wouldn't touch my existing paintwork get that as smooth as i can um you know they, you're not going to get it completely flat I don't think it's it is just going to be a, a rubber sealant so step that i sort of skipped past and didn't film is i have filled all of the screw holes with wood filler and sanded them all i've also filled the gap between the boards because even though i've got the slats running this way you're going to see some gap in between so this is nice and it's fairly even now you shouldn't between the gaps hopefully see too much of a noticeable visible line so just got to paint this you now repaint the ceiling and uh, then get the slats up so that is the line that's the line that I filled and you see it don't look too bloody bad I mean you really can't see where that is so 
so I'm so far happy with that. Uh, the stuff I've used is this. Uh, so it's a multi-purpose wood filler and it does it did say in the description that it was a flexible one of what it says doesn't shrink crack and all that lot resist shrinking and cracking use inside and out so i'm hoping being an internal external uh thing that it might just get away with it and I am a bit of a stickler for shit uh, stuff sorry so yeah that looks all right I'm pleased with that my dad suggested that so um yeah I was going to sicker flex the joints and put them together uh, but you would have still seen the, the gap but I think this i mean this really does look sort of seamless with the slats running vertically like lengthwise down the van i think you're not even really going to see them and i'm happy with that so if if they don't crack you know if it does what it says on the tin and it avoids shrinking and cracking then it should be all right so fingers crossed been planed so all the tongues and all the grooves have been removed so they are now just flat pieces of pine like this 11 mil pine I've got to go over them all sand them all then I've got to put a pre-stain treatment on because pine is obviously a soft wood what the stain does is it bleeds in into some of the areas quicker than others and you end up you can end up with blotchiness um, so what the pre-stain does is just protects it slightly and stops it seeping into certain areas more than others so it should give it a more uniformed um, saturation so that you'll get a more uniformed dye when you do the whole lot right it absolutely reeks in here spent the day cutting and sanding and then applying the um, what's it called the pre-varnish stuff the cellulose stuff to all of the planks i think there's 14 of them but uh it's pretty much taken me all day just to get to this point i've yet to next stage van um not varnish um stain them and then uh varnish them all but that's where i'm up to now which is here and it stinks in here if i was to light a match i reckon the room would go kaboom it's literally fumigated I've got the window open, but boy, it reeks in here. So at the moment, I've been doing this for three and a half hours. Should have put some gloves on as well. Because now I've got to wash my hands in some sort of cellulose, because that's uh, the first thing with cellulose. Well, it's all cellulose sort of based. It's spirit based anyway. But anyway, I've been doing this for three and a half hours. To, at this point, it's now nine o'clock, and I'm halfway through. But like I said, I can't can't not do it all tonight i've got to get it all finished so this is where i am just gonna do the centerpiece to make sure that at least if i was to run out of uh, stuff that you know at least i've got the centerpiece done and i should have enough that all matches but i should have enough but it's just a case of 
Oh, flipping it. The reason that's white under there is because I've put them upside down onto each other, just in case. Well, they're still sort of, they're not drying, but just in case there's any little wet bits, they're back to back. Um, but yeah, halfway through, absolutely knackered. I'm still going. Right, this is the wood stained and now varnished. It's just drying, the varnish is drying, but I think it's a matte, I don't know if it's matte or satin. But it's a clear varnish, but um, yeah, in this light, I don't know whether it's this light or not, but in this light, it looks really cherry. And it actually looks like, look there, it's quite cherryish. And uh, I can't help but think it looks like a load of garden fence posts. When it look, when it's in the dark, it actually, like the darkness of it, if it's in the right light, it looks quite nice. But um, yeah, in this light, which is, it might just be something to do with the orange tinge of the inner of the thing that's making it look orange, more orange than it is. I hope so, because uh, I'm not too keen on it being so orange. I want it to be more brown. Anyway, two coats of varnish done, sanded, I mean, pre-primed and uh, stained and whatever else. Uh, all done and it's only about half one in the morning so uh, yeah tomorrow is on to fit in the ceiling which is why I've got to get these done so that's why it's such a rush to get these done because the weather's going to be nice this weekend and uh, I need to get the ceiling in so yeah knackered going to bed and then start again in the morning Hardest job so far, I think this. It's absolutely knackering. Just hope there's, I mean, it's probably gonna be plenty more like this, but oh, hopefully not for a little while yet. Anyway, off to bed. So this is the slat, so I know that that obviously is where the um, beam is. And this is the beam um, where the boards meet been filled and painted with a, a wood filler like a flexible wood filler um, <clears throat> you might see some a little bit of a line and stuff like that little hairline cracks but to be honest you're not going to see that through the actual uh, wood slats which before you were going to see so yeah that's a pretty acceptable result for me um, <clears throat> that's where we are that's the, the line uh, so yeah through the slats you don't you can't see that at all which was my main concern so yeah pretty happy with that so as you can see the slats butt up against the outer uh, frame of the skylight and each one was cut individually now bearing in mind the roof arcs but the obviously the frame to the skylight is straight uh, so you've still got the arc of these uh, slats but cutting these working out the the gap that goes around this the way that that was done was measuring so taking this out of frame off working so working out from this slat uh, as a base slat and from the middle slat which was the one with the lights where the gaps were going to go so that we've got this slat that comes up to the edge of this frame once we knew where that was sitting I had to work out how much to cut off and obviously this frame isn't completely square it also bows slightly like it's got a bit of a little like a slight arc to it so you can't just cut a straight line uh, the way that I scribed that out was to measure from inside in here you've got these little clips so to measure measure from the inner frame to the outer frame once I'd got the line here um, so I knew what the depth of that was which I think was about three and a half mil from the inner clip to the outer ridge and once I had that three and a half mil I then lined I took this this frame laid it on the slat and scribed around it which is how I got the uh, the cut to go round but the other thing is I've left a sort of a slight gap in there and that is because I don't want the wood rubbing 
against this frame um, you know because obviously the van is going to move there is going to be some movement some expansion all that sort of stuff uh, and so I've um, left a bit of a gap up the edges <laughs> So I hope you found the video useful, helpful, entertaining, whatever it might be. Um, maybe if you're thinking about doing your own build, it will give you a few little tips and tricks and hints and things that you might be looking out for that you might come across and might just help you solve your nightmare a little bit quicker than, it, than I did. Um, but yeah, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. There's loads more videos coming up. Um, there's always something entertaining happening. Uh, next time, I think I'm going to be looking at installing the skylight. I've got a, a small little uh, sight mini hecky skylight that I've installed. Nothing more nerve wracking than cutting a hole in the roof of your van. And I installed two uh, large windows. They are absolutely massive. Um, so, uh, yeah, don't forget to check out those two videos coming up. Hopefully the footage will be a bit better because I did film them on a GoPro um, rather than the phone. Don't forget, check out the Let Us Live website for all your motorcycle merchandise needs. And there's a 5% discount when you use Tony Reviews at checkout. Safe riding, safe driving, and I will see you all very soon. <laughs>